The Range Rover Evoque starts from around £32,000, but the plug-in hybrid, the P300e, starts from roughly £46,000. And the SE model that we've got over here starts from just under £50,000. So in this review, we're going to be seeing if it's actually worth its money and specifically how it compares to some of its competitors. So to kick things off, we're going to talk about its exterior design. And here, I really do love what Land Rover achieved. The Range Rover Evoque looks fantastic. From the front, it's got that cute type of Evoque look, but then its headlights give you that, well, quite stylish finish. The same could be said about its rear profile where you've got the tail lights which just ooze quality. The little spoiler as well adds a little bit of extra sporty flair and therefore it's definitely appreciated at least in my books. Now that for the side profile the 18 inch alloys come as standard in the R Dynamic S which is the standard trim that comes available in the P300e so in other words the plug-in hybrid model. If you go for the SE model like we have on a review you get 20 inch alloys and if you want the diamond cut alloys it's going to add an additional 340 pounds to your additional bill that is however if you go for the se dynamic if you were to go for the regular s model it's going to cost you a little bit extra than that now speaking about its side profile i like the fact that there are body colored wheel archers and also sky skirts it just adds to the overall premium look and feel and as for the door handles they're actually concealed within the vehicle which just give it a little extra touch of class when it's parked up but of course if you want to unlock the vehicle and indeed when you're just at a standstill you have the door handles which are propped out which makes it very easy to access the vehicle. Now I should also mention that the Evoque has a 530 millimeter wading depth which should suffice however of course if you're going to be going real cross country and you want something that's a little bit more rugged for the off-road terrain then you might want to be looking at the Defender or the Discovery instead. Now elsewhere if you want to be taking some stuff with you you've got 75 kilograms of extra weight that you can take on terms of its roof and as for the trailers you've got 750 kilograms of an unbrake trailer and if it's braked then you've got 1600 kilograms of towing capacity. Now subjectively its exterior design is absolutely stunning but its interior really oozes quality at least in my opinion. The choice of materials around the dashboard, the steering wheel, the seat upholstery, even the roof lining and the door frames just is just absolutely fantastic. I really have got no complaints whatsoever. The only small little minor point is the fact that there's some plastic use around the center console and this can feel a little bit cheap specifically if you're going to be tugging at it but I don't suspect a normal mortal is going to be doing that but anyway Anyway, going on to the subject of technology, I should mention that in the regular iDynamic S model, you just have a regular 10-inch display, but in the SE model that we have on review, you've got two displays, one of which is used for your infotainment, and it also supports Android Auto, both in a wired and wireless format, which is also a great little touch and a little nod towards technology. But then you've got a secondary display towards the center console, just in front the, of the physical gear selector, and here you'll find your climate control and also your ability to change, let's say, the driving dynamics. So for example, if you're going off-road, you can choose one of the off-road terrain modes for you to select. Now you've still got two knobs, physical knobs that is, and that's to adjust the climate controls both for your front passenger and your rear passenger. However, if you want to control the fan speed, you're gonna to have to touch on the button. And I do have to say that is a little bit, well, cumbersome. Specifically when you're driving, the last thing you wanna do is look for that touch button, press it, and then adjust the left side knob to adjust the fan speed of course you can leave it on auto if you trust the vehicle to do what it wants to do but if you want to be in more of control of the overall fan speed it does mean that you have to just do some bit more fannying around with the touchscreen display now on the subject of displays there's another 12.3 inch display on the se model is the fully interactive display as a instrument cluster now again in the regular r dynamic s so the standard level a PHEV model, you do have physical dies and a TFT display instead. There's also the option to add a head-up display that's around a £700 option. It's a shame not to see it come as standard in a vehicle that costs upwards of £45,000 but nevertheless if you do want that head-up display and want to bolster the overall driving and safety credentials of the vehicle then you can add that as your additional extra. Now before proceeding on from the subject of technology I should also mention the audio system. Now for those who are subscribed they know that I do dedicated audio reviews and if you're not subscribed definitely do consider subscribing to the channel but what I will say over here is that there is an audio review of the Evoque PHEV and you can find it up on your pop banner down in the description below or indeed in the pinned comments what I'll say 
in a nutshell is the sound system as standard comes with a six speaker configuration and I was just expecting a little bit more from Land Rover. Of course you can upgrade this for the Meridian sound system that comes in at £630 or if not more if you want the surround Meridian sound system but nevertheless I still wanted a little bit more from the stock sound system that Land Rover was offering in the Evoque. And so now we get on to storage and first off let's talk about the in-cabin experience which in my opinion I think will suffice for a lot of individuals. Just underneath the front centre console you've got a non-slip bay for let's say a phone and this can also double up as a wireless charging bay if you go for the £300 option. Down towards the centre console you've got two cup holders although if you want a cover for the cup holders then you'll have to go for a £50 option on top which seems a little bit silly but nevertheless. Then you've got the armrest compartment which is large enough for a small size purse or a makeup bag or indeed a wallet. Here you'll also find a 12 volt socket, a USB type C and a USB type A um, input so this is useful for let's say connecting up to the infotainment system. You have of course got the glove compartment box and then you've got the four door bins. The front two are large enough for a 500 milliliter bottle alongside some smaller sized valuables and as for the rear it's a little bit more limited. At the rear as well it should be mentioned that you do also have a pull down armrest and here it reveals two cup holders and elsewhere it's well a little bit more limited. You haven't got any other storage compartments to play around with. Now I should also point out you do have a sunglass compartment which can be found towards the front of the cabin. Of course you don't have to place sunglasses here you can place let's say a cigar or let's say some lipstick or whatever it might be that you're going to be um, storing but it's a small little compartment here and I do think it's a really little handy inclusion. Now of course when it comes to storage we have to talk about boot capacity. Now it's worth bearing in mind that you've got a manual tailgate as standard in the R Dynamic S model which is the standard PHEV variant. If you go for the SE model that we have on review you've got an electric tailgate. This is also available as an option for the S model for around 420 odd pounds. Now when the electric tailgate or the regular tailgate opens up you can see I'm just under six foot and I can easily fit over here. I've got no problems in terms of headroom. It's also very easily closed because it's got an electric button again via the electric tailgate model or else you'll just have to slam it down manually. Now as for loading in and out goods it's fantastic because it's not got a raised boot lip which makes it very easy to take let's say elongated goods or large goods. Furthermore it's bolstered by the fact that you can have flat loading bay so therefore the seats load flat and it's also got a 40-20-40 split. There's also underfloor compartment storage space for your charging cables or of course for other goods if you want to put them and as for the overall total storage that you've got well you've got 591 litres at the boot and if you were to pop down the seats this figure extends up to 1383 litres which should really suffice for a lot of individuals of course it's not going to be as much as larger size SUVs out there on the market but nevertheless I think most people will be pleased by the amount of storage that you got on the Evoque. Now I think most will find that the rear boot will suffice for their weekly shops and what have you but what about when it comes to occupant space within the cabin? Now first off I do have to talk about headroom and legroom and as we're at the rear of the cabin of course we should talk about this uh, specifically as someone who's just under six foot this might be quite relevant to some people. Now the legroom is not too bad from the rear portion of the front seats to my knees however I can't extend them because I'm hitting the lower portion of the front seat so therefore it means it's a little bit uncomfortable on my quad muscles specifically if you've had a pretty intensive taekwondo workout like I did yesterday. Now as for headroom it's again a bit limited if you're around six foot four six foot seven I think you'll struggle to fit comfortably and the same could be said at the front of the cabin. Although at the front of the cabin you do have a 12-way electric and heated seats that come as standard in the plug-in hybrid models which one ups its well non-plug-in hybrid variants which in other words get an eight-way manually adjustable seats instead. But there are certain things I do have to talk about and it's kind of like a little grip in terms of the overall option list. Now if you wanted a, a heated steering wheel you're going to have to go for a £190 option. If you wanted the sliding panoramic roof like we have it's a £1,600 option. If you don't want it to be sliding and you want it to be fixed then it comes out at £1,150. If you want the rear privacy glass like we have it's £450 and if you want a cabin purifier in other words for your climate controls it's £335 and even if you wanted keyless entry in other words to bolster the overall comfort it comes in at £420. I think a lot of these features should have come as standard specifically in a vehicle that costs upwards of £45,000 but alas that's not the case and I just thought to kind of highlight it in my review. Now on the subject of options I do quite like how Land Rover have incorporated the rear view camera on your rear view mirror. Now here it allows you to see kind of a digital way of well your surroundings but of course you don't have to use this even if you have the option by simply flicking up and down on the rear view mirror. Now this perfectly leads me on to the subject of visibility. Now at the rear it is somewhat limited so you can kind of see the inclusion of that camera 
camera, but thankfully a rear view camera is incorporated as standard. So as soon as you hit reverse, you can see it on your infotainment system. And then you've got front and rear parking sensors, which come as standard. Now, if you want to further bolster the experience, you can also add a 585 pound option. And that's a 3D surround camera option, which shows up on your infotainment system and gives you a little bit more of extra peace of mind. So what about when it comes to driving comfort? Well, first off, I do have to quickly touch upon the cabin noise. And here you do hear a little bit of road noise creeping in from the tires, but on the whole, it's actually pretty decent. A little bit of a detailed breakdown can be found in the audio review that I previously referenced. Now, as for the suspension setup in the Evoque plug-in hybrid, I think it's done pretty well, whereby when you're pottering around town, you don't feel too much of the speed bumps or let's say the potholes or uneven surfaces. But at the same time, you do get a little bit of body roll when you're going on country roads. I don't suspect many people will be cornering at 40, 50, 60 miles an hour around country roads in the Evoque. But nevertheless, I just thought to mention that it does suffer from a little bit of body roll. Not too severe, but neither is it as well planted as some of its more sporty competitors out there, say for example, from the likes of Volvo or let's say BMW. And this does bring me on to its driver's feel. And here the Evoque doesn't quite well evoke that sort of driver's feel sorry for the pun but honestly the the steering wheel just feels a little bit numb even when you're at a low bit in terms of s mode in other words it's sport mode down on the gear selector you still feel that the vehicle doesn't quite respond perfectly to one one and one driver's input it's again no competition to some of its sportier plug-in hybrid or fully electric counterparts and in this domain what i will say is that you should just be mindful that this car isn't exactly suited for those well sporty boy or girl racers out there but nevertheless this does mean that when you are driving around town the steering wheels input just feels so light if you're going to be doing three point turns or you're going to be reversing it's just an absolute breeze and an absolute joy when you're using the power steering on the Range Rover Evoque. Now moving on we get on to performance and here you do have that front mounted motor it's a 1.5 litre three cylinder engine to be specific and therefore doesn't have the same sort of grunt as the two litre four cylinder engine which you'll find in the other variants of the Evoque. However given it's the plug-in hybrid variant you do also have an electric motor and 80 kilowatt electric motor to be more specific and therefore combined they output 309 horsepower 540 newton meters of torque and i had it tested from 0 to 60 miles an hour in 6.85 seconds which is a little bit higher than the 6.1 seconds claim that land rover have suffice to say combined these two are well make this evoke plug-in hybrid the most powerful in the line and therefore is well the fastest evoke on the market so that electric power does certainly give you some extra grunt as for top speed you're limited to 134 miles an hour that is combined with petrol and electric if you're going in pure ev mode you're going to be limited to roughly 84 miles an hour now something else i should also mention is the fact that its eight speed gearbox is absolutely buttery smooth and i really do love it when you're going through the gears be it automatically in d mode or if you go in sport mode and therefore let the vehicle do it for you for itself or if you want to manually do it by shifting left on the gear selector and going up and down, then what you'll find is that going through those eight gears is just an absolute dream. You don't really hear the shift between each of the gears. You don't really feel it either. And the way that, well, Land Rover have achieved this should definitely be commended. The same could be said between the petrol and EV switch. It is absolutely seamless. And again, you don't really notice it other than potentially hearing the 1.5 liter engine trickling away from the front of the vehicle. And that's about it. However, what isn't as impressive is his electric range now here you've got a 15 kilowatt hour battery pack and from my test i achieved roughly 25 miles in all electric mode of course it really depends as to how you drive and you do get a degree of regenerative braking when you put your foot down on the physical brake pedal and therefore it recoups energy back into the battery pack suffice to say even land rover's claim of around 32 miles isn't exactly going to incite a lot of confidence when it comes to driving in electric mode but it 
it means that if you're going to be pottering around town or doing some weekly shops then you can drive it in fully electric mode without having to worry about emitting any harmful fumes but in this domain as well it does mean that the vehicle is a little bit heavier than its petrol and diesel counterparts and as a result it means the overall fuel efficiency is lower I had it tested around 35 to 40 miles per gallon in mixed driving tests and I suspect you'll get a far better figure if you were to go for the non-electrified variant of the Evoque. Now on the plus side recharging the Evoque plug-in hybrid is actually really good because here Land Rover have incorporated a DC rapid input via its CCS port and means that if you go to a 50 kilowatt charger you'll be limited to 32 kilowatt because of its onboard charger and allows you to go from 0 to 80 percent in roughly 20 to 30 minutes. If you were to go for a 7 kilowatt input which is a lot more common when it comes to home or workplace chargers it'll take only 90 minutes which is far superior than a lot of its competitors which offer just around 3.6 kilowatts of input. Now if you were to go for a three pin plug on the Evoque PHEV it will take roughly six to seven hours give or take. Now I should also mention in terms of the safety and driver assistance systems the Range Rover Evoque is actually pretty impressive. It scored five out of five stars on Euro Incaps tests and while its side pole test doesn't do as well as the Land Rover Defender which is built like an absolute brick it is still impressive to say the least. Now as for the driver assistance systems which is something that I can actually test for because I can't quite crash disc a vehicle a multitude of times and in different angles the cruise control does a decent job although the adaptive cruise control which is available in the R Dynamic SE does result from a little bit of deviation in other words from the distance in front of you so therefore when it comes to regulating your speed and distance from the vehicle in front of you I feel that it doesn't do that good of a job and it just feels a little bit irregular in terms of how it acts nevertheless it is there for you to use and you don't have to use it if you don't wish as for the lane departure warning it isn't enabled as standard which I found quite interesting given the fact that the vehicle has been tested by Euro NCAP and instead if you want to actuate it or indeed initiate it should I say you can just press a button on your steering wheel and it illuminates in green and therefore well does the job as for the other safety systems that are incorporated you've got rear cross traffic alert blind spot monitoring system and exit warning which come as standard in the R Dynamic SE if you want this all then you'll have to go for an option pack on the regular R Dynamic S in other words the entry level plug-in hybrid as it leads me on to my verdict what do I make about the plug-in hybrid Evoque well quite frankly I absolutely love its exterior and interior design and I think it's really comfortable to drive as well as for its rear passenger space and boot capacity while they're a little bit more limited in comparison to larger size SUVs I think it'll suffice for a lot of individuals the biggest sticking point however for me as a consumer is this overall asking price the regular petrol or diesel variants while they are less powerful and offer less standardized features they do come in at a significant cheaper price elsewhere if you look at spending around £50,000 on a vehicle and you don't mind going fully electric then you've got the likes of the Volvo XC40 Recharge Twin Pro offering around 250 miles of range great standardized features good driving dynamics and will reduce your benefit in kind taxation to 0 or 1% in comparison to the ted odd percent that you're going to be paying on a PHEV so I'd be just intrigued to hear your thoughts as to would you be considering a plug-in hybrid Evoque over the regular petrol or diesel Evoque and or would you just consider getting an electrified vehicle such as let's say the Volvo or of course other alternatives out there on the market that come in at a similar price point do let me know in the comments section below and of course if you like this independent detailed review definitely do drop a like and subscribe and hit that bell notification all of which would be greatly appreciated as such I've been Chris from Totally EV and I'll hopefully see you in the next one take care of yourselves and goodbye